kiddo and welcome back to day 8 of our 12 days of Christmas holiday books. Do you have a full house at Christmas time? Some people have a lot of people in their house, others have only a few. But either way, if your house is full of love, then that's what makes it Christmas time. Let's read about Mr and Mrs Moore's house at Christmas time, the full house. I'm not sure who wrote and illustrated this story, but it was published in 1994 by Armadillo Books. If anyone knows the name of the author and would like to let me know, please send me an email to the address in the description so I can credit the author. Are you ready? Let's begin. The Full House I don't know how we're going to manage this Christmas, said Mrs Moore. We're going to be full to the rafters. Yes, dear, said her husband without thinking. He was buried deep in his paper, and he thought it was easiest not to argue. Well, I had to invite your sister Maggie and her children when I heard that their new kitchen wouldn't be ready in time, explained Mrs Moor. You can't have Christmas without a kitchen. Quite right, said Mr Moor vaguely. I've just got a few things to do in the tool shed. A couple of days later, Mr Moore's quiet time with a newspaper was interrupted again. I really don't know where I'm going to put them all, he heard his wife say, but I wouldn't let Jimmy and his mother stay in that drafty old house over Christmas. Is there no peace, thought Mr Moore behind his paper. You know best about these things, dear. I'll be in the tool shed if you need me, he said. Mr and Mrs Moore's house was not very big, and on Christmas Eve, when he came in from the quiet of his tool shed, Mr Moore began to think that perhaps he should have paid more attention before, because he walked into the living room, as he usually did, and fell flat on his face. Mrs Moore had pulled out the sofa bed for Jimmy and his mother to sleep on. Honestly, George, she said, and she picked him up. I did tell you it would be full over Christmas. Upstairs, Mr Moore had another surprise. His nightshirt was laid out on a sleeping bag on the landing. Yep, we're going to sleep out here, explained the wife. I've given our room to Maggie and the children. It'll be a tight squeeze for them. After all, it's only for one night and we don't need much room. But people will walk on us in the night, moaned Mr Moore. I've thought of that, said Mrs Moore cheerfully. We'll leave the light on so that they can see their way to the bathroom. I can't sleep with the light on protested her husband. Ugh, don't make such a fuss, said Mrs Moor. You'll enjoy yourself. Mr Moor thought this was highly unlikely. There is to be no more of this taking in of waifs and strays, he said to his wife, even at Christmas. In fact, Mr Moor did quite enjoy himself that evening, having so many people round for supper. There wasn't enough chairs, but somehow that didn't seem to matter. Everybody was happy and laughing. Perhaps it was nice to have a full house after all. Just as everyone was getting ready for bed, the doorbell rang. Whoever can that be, said Mrs Moore going downstairs. On the doorstep stood a young woman with a tiny baby. I'm so sorry to disturb you, she said, but someone told me that you sometimes help people with difficulties. I need somewhere to stay, just for tonight. There was a fire in my street today and everything at home is wet from the firefighters' hoses. We don't need much. The floor will be fine. Oh, I'm so sorry, said Mrs Moore, but I just have no room at all. Nonsense, said a voice behind her. It was Mr Moore. Of course you can stay, he said. It is Christmas after all. We just have to do a little reorganising. Mrs Moore smiled to herself. Her husband was good-hearted, really, but she couldn't think how they were going to manage. Later that night, Mr Moore sighed contentedly. This really is surprisingly comfortable, he said. Don't you think so, my dear? Mrs Moore chuckled. Well, it is a place that you've always been particularly fond of, she said, and it's a lot quieter than our house. Shall I turn the light off? By all means, said Mr Moor, tucked up in his tool shed. Merry Christmas. Wonderful. Did you enjoy that story? I did. 
I liked how Mr. Moore came round in the end. He wasn't very happy sharing his house. And then he was more than happy. Well done, Mr. Moore. See you tomorrow for another story about a man who definitely does not have a full house. Mr. Bumble. See you then. Bye.